haven't received e either via email or uh, paper any questions concern concerning the subject of husband and wife. I'm sure you have questions. So, if you have any, <coughs> you could either ask them directly or you can write them down so that I can have uh, copies of it. Okay? So, would you do that right now? Think of if you, if you have any questions about husband and wife relationships specifically, right, then write them down and then I'll answer them or respond to them the best, the best I can. And then right after that we'll jump into to parenting and hopefully by then they'll be here. <laughs> okay. Alright, so if you would write down questions concerning the husband and wife relationship that you would like to get perspective on. Because if you don't have any questions, that means your relationship with your spouse is perfect. Which I seriously doubt. Thank you. 
and the tones are different. So even though my, my wife is free to debate with me and, and disagree with me and talk to me about you know, how she disagrees, all of that, when the, the role takes into place and the position, as in authority, 
when that is also kept in mind, then the conversations can have a direction. Okay, so she can, like for instance, when we argue with the Lord, there's always a submission involved in that. That, that we can disagree with the Lord, but we don't authoritatively try to take over. We dialogue and speak with him in a submissive tone. Okay? So if my wife doesn't do that with me, then there's a problem. Right? So then what do I have to do? I have to not uh, usurp, I mean exercise like uh, tyranny, but I say, honey, you know, you can't, you can't don't, don't talk to me like that. Okay? So I can let her know that I, I disapprove, but I can do that in a loving way. Right? Because I'm, remember, my role is to love her as I love myself. So if it's not happening, if she is not responding to me properly, then I can <coughs> share with her what the problem is, and then we can move on there. The other thing is, whatever is disturbing at the time, okay, I can address that so that our conversations will be better. For instance, when she says, no, I don't want to, he's not doing his work and you know he's slacking off and every time I see him he's doing something else other than his work and, <coughs> and she is complaining at me, then I say, okay honey, I'll take care of that. So I go to the son and I say, this is what you need to do, you need to do your work between you know, 10 o'clock and 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock and 3 o'clock, nothing else. You understand? Okay. And then make sure that he's accountable by, at that point, say, okay, you can't do your work anywhere else but here, so that it's in public, we know that you're doing it, and you're actually getting your work done, and you show me your work at the end of the day. Okay? That kind of thing. So the dynamics of the relationship is clearer when we know what we need to do as individuals, and then we compensate for that when something is not going well. Okay. So eventually she'll have to come back to me and say, ah, oh, you know, it's, uh, sorry for talking to you like that. And um, then I would have to you know, apologize to her for not taking responsibility for what I was supposed to do. Um, and then resolve that. Okay. Uh, I have a set of uh, CDs and DVDs for the, the marriage conference that we, we did two years ago. I forgot to bring them. So um, that addresses like most of what we discussed in the, in the study, but there are some aspects in there that didn't come out here. Uh, but I want to bring that so that you can um, uh, get them. Um, and then you know you can donate to the, the uh, to the nonprofit organization that I would like to start. But anyway, um, we can talk about that later. So here now, does anybody else want to share about how the marriage classes helped you? Okay. The fact that more people are not sharing concerns me. Right? It does. So, I want to know what it is. So, we're going to do more practical stuff so that you can uh, reveal your heart. Okay? So, either you didn't take notes or we didn't get practical and all that kind of stuff. Um, you should read over your notes and you know, share. Is there anything else that you would like to share concerning the marriage study? Because we spent like 13, 13 weeks together doing that. So if it was a waste of time, then we won't ever do it again. You know, I won't take it to another church and all that stuff. But if it was helpful, of course, then we can help other couples. Can you think of anything else? Part, the practical part of it. I mean, missing a lot of foundation about the, the psychology behind it, which is you know, important. But how do you get into the practical matter? Mm -hmm. How do you deal with certain specific situations? Right. Applying those—that's probably something 
Yeah. So a little bit planting, I guess. Right. Yeah. And I, I did the did that intentionally, but the the audience. <laughs> okay. And what I'm talking about that is this. The groundwork, the theology behind it, the understanding of it, all of that needed to take place. Okay. But what I was expecting, and and this is the way it has to be, and I kept asking for it, remember, is the practical aspects of how that works out in your life and in your relationship has to be motivated from you. In other words, you have to think, okay, now I understand all of that, but when we do this, how does that apply, right? Okay, so when we're in this situation or this happens, how does this theology apply? Okay. Those were the kinds of questions that I was anticipating, but I didn't get any. Yeah, maybe, I think maybe two. But I didn't get any. Uh, that's a problem. And the reason why that's a problem is because I want you to engage. And remember, I also said that if you're not comfortable asking the question you know, in the audience because you don't want to share your personal issues or problems with the group, which, by the way, I want you to understand something about that, but I'm going to share that. But I'm saying, if you weren't comfortable, then you should um, email it to me or write it in a note so that I can just declare it as, as a general question to everybody, right? That's what I said. If you are not able to, okay, let's go back to the sharing. If you're not able to do that, if you're not able to ask specific questions or share in this manner, we are not helping each other. Because your question is a question for everybody, because everybody's going to have that question. You're not alone. You're not the only two people that are married. And you're not the only two people who has a problem. You're not the only two people who argue. You're not the only two people who have, you know, this is this kind of discussion. Or only two people who, who talked about divorce, right? Okay? This is not, that's just not it. Remember, every woman has pains in childbearing and childbirth. It's a universal thing. Okay? So, every marriage is cursed. Right? Which means every marriage has problems that we need to deal with. And why did God design it like that? Because... It is only in the context of marriage that you surface the greatest need that you have for personal growth. So it's, the Lord is just bringing it out through the relationship. And the, wa the reason why he does that is so that you can have greater intimacy. Okay. So, what is the primary, <laughs> what is the primary reality of our relationship with the Lord. I mean, you can think of a lot of things, but what's the primary reality? Jesus defined it in chapter 17 of John. So, anybody have a guess? Jesus what was that? I didn't get that. Friend. Friend. Being a friend? Okay. <clears throat> Why did you say that? Today, I would have caused some... Oh! Aha! Okay. <laughs> That's what I think. Well, let me tell you, okay? <clears throat> that uh, insight is um, all-encompassing. Because how is eternal life defined. What's eternal life? Give me some guesses. Stay with God forever. Okay. What? You say staying in God, uh, with, with God forever and what you say? Knowing God? Okay. How do you know that's the definition? Where? John chapter yeah. 17, right? Yeah. yeah, John chapter 17. What does Jesus say? This is eternal life. This is John chapter 17, verse 3. This is eternal life that you may know God. Okay? All right. <clears throat> this is eternal life. 
So when we say, hey, <coughs> God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him may have eternal life. Is that duration of life? Yes, it includes that, but primarily eternal life is knowing God. Okay? Knowing God. Now, knowing God is a reality for the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, but where do we come in? We're not in the family. We're not the Father, nor the Son, nor the Holy Spirit. <coughs> Who are we? We are adopted family members in one way. But in actuality, if we're not family members, what are we? We are friends. And God can only make us friends. We can't make Him. <laughs> he makes us friends. All right. So, <coughs> If the primary uh, reality in a relationship with God is knowledge of Him, how are we going to gain that knowledge? Life experience. Life experience. And the way that that surfaces is relationships. And what is the primary relationship on the planet? Besides our relationship, our personal relationship with the Lord. Primary relationship. Husband and wife. That's how it started in the garden. That's how it is. And that's where all the goodness should flow out of, right? So how does how does God do that? He makes the goodness flow out of our relationship with our spouse, but we have all kinds of fireworks and explosions and antagonism and battles, right? But through those, it's supposed to surface a greater depth <coughs> of understanding and knowledge of each other. And through that, we're supposed to gain a greater understanding and a knowledge of the Lord. I mean, she's using our marriage relationship to help us know him better. That's why you have to help each other by surfacing it, by revealing it, by sharing it. Because then you help every other couple. Your problem is not your only problem, it's your problem is everybody's problem. I mean, there are phases and you know, shades of it, all of that. But that's what it is. So if you keep it to yourself, you're not helping everybody, nor are you helping yourself grow. So, help us by participating. Help one another by participating. That's why I try to reveal as much as possible about my relationship with my wife so that you can get encouraged. Oh, Pastor, his wife did that? Well then, it's okay. You know, uh, it's okay that we did the same thing. Is you can hide and pretend like your marriage is perfect, but we know it's not true. Okay. So we might as well be able to talk about it and share it with one another and help each other grow. Okay. So you know the the Chinese community, like the Korean community, are not really comfortable sharing but I want you to get used to it. And this is a good place to actually begin. If you have smaller groups that you can do that with, that's great. So share a little bit more. In other words, step just a little bit out of your comfort zone here and start practicing that so that you can get more and more comfortable stepping out of your comfort zone, little by little, and then you continue to cultivate that and grow out of it mature and then you'll also be able to help other people by sharing that with you know younger couples as you as you learn. Okay? So step just a little bit out of your comfort zone today. Okay? And
and share something about yourselves so that we can help each other grow. Okay? Are you with me? Are you willing? Okay. All right. So, I asked a couple here, right here, they've been married two years, and I said, what have you learned about one another? One thing that you learned about one another in the two years that you were married, okay? And they couldn't think of one. Probably because the question is a little uh, um, strange. Uh, I don't know if they've considered that, okay? So, what's her favorite food? Nothing <laughs> spicy. What? Spicy food, but give me one specific one. <laughs> How do you know what to take, where to take her uh, for dinner? You wanted to treat her really well. <laughs> All right, brother, I'm going to give you homework. Okay, here's the homework. You're going to, before next week, you're going to have to interview her <laughs> and find out some of her, all, all the, the normal facts or elevated facts about her, like her favorite food, her favorite restaurant, TV, whatever it is. Okay? Give me a whole list of them, and you're going to interview her. Okay? And for you, you're going to interview him. So what do you like to do when you're all by yourself without me? Uh, what is your favorite childhood memory? What is your favorite Bible character? You know, stuff like that, where you want to get to know him better, okay? okay? So, you're going to interview each other, you're going to have your own separate list, and then next week, Elder Jeff is going to have you read it all. <laughs> everybody. Okay? Alright. Do you remember your first date? Where's your first date? Okay, what did you do? Hiking. You went hiking? Okay, great. Uh, and then what was your second date? <laughs> do you remember? Okay, what was it? You were in the lab? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you took each other to the lab for your second date? And what did you do? Oh, yeah. <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> Marvelous, okay? Unless you love somebody. So, I know, I know, just think about that, okay? Because the reality is, all right, that's just marvelous because whatever it is, it didn't need to, need to be, you know, marvelous thing. As long as you're doing it together, it's a great date, right? Yeah. Because eventually, what are we going to do? We're going to be with Jesus, and that would just be enough. It doesn't matter what we're doing. We're just being with Jesus. Right? The fact that you're being with your girlfriend, boyfriend, spouse, you know, uh, fiance, whatever it is, that's a good thing. So my, my church is doing a series on marriage, okay? And the pastor was saying, yeah, you know, we just go to Costco together. That's a date. I'm going, go to Costco. I don't want to shop with my wife. Right? <laughs> because... When we registered for the for our wedding, we did everything together. We went to you know pick this and this and this and this is what we want. Da 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 da. Okay. But five minutes into shopping, I am totally exhausted. And the reason why I'm totally exhausted is because there are ten thousand decisions that we have to make. Like. We 720 different things. Do I want this? What color? What goes with this? Da, 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 da. And I just get totally overwhelmed. That's all the fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. all the fun. If, if I were shopping for a gun, you know, okay, a weapon, that would be perfectly okay. But if I'm shopping for something in the house, right, that's something. If I, if I were, if we were shopping for a car, we would do all the research. I would write read all the statistics, the length, the breaking distance, you know, what kind of carburetor <laughs> or, you know, whatever it is, right? That would be okay. But if it was something to do with the house and color and curtains and all that stuff, it just over.